action, momentum swing. They need to get a stop here on defense. So, all yeah, right. They cut our sign in half. We'll turn it around so they can see it. Yeah, it was just barely too big, and they, I don't think they would have measured until some guy said something, and then they measured. So we're still going to try. It's in two pieces, though. We're still going to try. Um, let me show you around, though, because this place is crazy already. So it is 5.15. We are two hours and 15 minutes until the game starts. We are 45 minutes until people are let in, and this is already the the chaos. Thank you. Oh, also, somebody, I freaking love the internet. One of my followers was at the game on Wednesday, knows a lady that works in ticketing, and talked to her at that game and gave me her phone number and said, text her, she's gonna let you in early. So there's a chance, I'm not making any promises, I'm not making any promises, you heard it. There's a chance we're gonna be let in early and might get to go courtside for the pregame at least. She said no guarantee of any autographs or interactions at all, but we might be courtside for the pregame. done a little bit better job controlling my own emotions but I think it just started bad for us and then continued to snowball and that's something we have to control a little bit better not only like did we not execute on the offensive end in the third quarter but I thought they destroyed us offensively um, our defense wasn't very good so, uh, I think just improving in that area and just all kind of gathering our emotions a little bit better and finding better shots I thought we kind of stopped playing in a way that made us successful in the first half so, just a good learning opportunity for us. I feel like we could have played a lot better. I think there's a line, and sometimes your your passion and your emotion can can get to you, but that's never any something I would ever, I would ever change or anybody on our team would change. So, the Indiana Fever are so well supported in this town by its fans. Like, I think I saw maybe ten Lynx jerseys the entire time out of seventeen thousand tickets they said they sold. Anytime the Lynx did anything good, it was just dead silence and anytime anybody from the fever did anything deafening roar like I still have no voice we were all just screaming but deafening I have a bunch of videos and pictures and stuff that I will post but like you can't hear anything it's just loud but I don't know if you guys can always see it on TV but one thing that was hilarious to me was the way that Caitlin can just like command the crowd first of all she does anything they go nuts right but there was one particularly bad call in the third quarter. I think it's when Aaliyah got the technical. I'm trying to remember. I'll go back and watch. But the crowd, like a few boos, and she just goes, and all of a sudden, everybody, it's just the loudest boo you could imagine. 
And I will say, I'm going to agree with Coach Sides on this one. When she took her out in the third quarter, she needed to. I don't, again, I don't know what they showed on TV. She was about this close from getting a technical, like, four different times. And they're like, don't take her out when she's hot. I'm like, she, on the court, you could tell she was going to lose it. She was saying too much. She was starting to follow refs around, still chirping at the other end. Like, she needed to pull her. She needed a timeout. But the atmosphere was just incredible and i've been to a lot of sporting events this was like next level what up y'all this is your boy ace here and welcome to track and ace man sorry i couldn't get this video up overnight man uh just was uh not in the cars for me to get this video up man uh never did have time to go get the audio up record it and uh edit it for y'all man but uh go i'm gonna get it up this afternoon uh, i'm gonna get the lexi hall analysis up too i did a separate video ranting about kelsey mitchell as well I'm gonna be putting that one up probably after this one but i had already recorded that one before this one so wanted to make sure i got all those things off my chest about kelsey so i couldn't go into her in this video and concentrate more on cc in the, in this game as a whole man so first things first with cc man um you know i, I thought in this particular game I heard some, you know, Fever fans, you know, kind of going off on Caitlin about the refereeing and all that and 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 that kind of stuff. Um, I, I really didn't. I don't really have a problem with players doing that. Uh, she apologized anyways for it in the press conference. Uh, she owned up to it. But to me, that's just a fire from a player. You know what I'm saying? I hope that she stays away from that extra tech because it, she will get suspended. And the last thing CC need and the team needs is for her to be getting suspended. Um for any amount of time we shouldn't be losing her for any amount of time man we can't afford to with this team man uh i told y'all before and i'll tell y'all again man this roster is not good right now this is not they're overachieving this season and that's what's going on with the fever they're overachieving a lot of the weaknesses and why this team hasn't won in the past eight years and why they haven't um why they didn't go to the playoffs with this particular team last year was 13 27 is because they're not a good roster you know, there's a few good players on the team, but they're not a good roster as a whole. Uh, like I said, they've been, you know, for the most part, they've been overachieving. And, uh, you know, I don't think they're particularly co coached too well as well. I think that's another big problem on this team. Um, but th this team overall, you know, Caitlin Clark is just a winner. And so she brought the winning attitude to the team. And uh, Lexi Hall playing good defense. That's, you know, bailing them out over and over again is the reason why they're in a position where they're going to, uh, where they've already clinched a playoff spot, but they're probably going to be a top six seed in doing it. But this team, yeah, it needs a lot of roster construction. Uh, this is why I've been doing videos in the past few weeks talking about what they need to do and all that kind of stuff. Because I know this team, ain't it ain't where it's at. This is not the team when CC starts winning titles in this league, and she will win titles. This is not going to be the team that they're going to have. Uh, a lot of these players are going to be on the outs. Uh, the good thing about this year, too, they got an expansion draft, so we know we're losing a player. That'll help accelerate the process of getting rid of some players. We got a couple of big free agents. Uh, although, I would like to keep Erica Wheeler. I, I probably wouldn't mind keeping Erica Wheeler, to be honest. Uh, but Mitchell definitely got to go. And then I, I think we're going to, we're going to need a center. And uh, a forward like a Sasu Sabli wouldn't help get someone like that. And we definitely need to draft uh, a guard that can play defense and um, could pass because this offense looked horrid without Caitlin Clark. So we also need like a backup point guard too. I I've been noticing that we could use a backup point. Maybe kind of get in some games. I think there's some games where Clark shouldn't be going over like 30 minutes, man. To preserve her a little bit better as her career goes along. Like, we could get a backup point for that. So, this is a lot of things that we got to do. And the Lynx exposed a lot of it. And that's why I think it was actually a good thing that we had the Lynx beat us again like this. Because it exposes all of the flaws. I told y'all, the two games. Oh, you know what? I didn't release that video. The video where they clinched. I mentioned this in that video. I said the three games that we got to be on the watch out for is this Lynx game and the two Aces games from next week. Uh, those are going to be games that are going to tell us where we're at. Because, trust me, whatever you saw tonight, that's definitely, or last night, that's definitely the playoffs. 
That's the playoffs in the nut. That's how this shit is going to go in the playoffs. Regular season, it looks all good in the regular season, but I'm telling you, in the playoffs, this is what it really looks like. You know what I mean? The game slows down in the playoffs, and you have a lot of things going on where play. Like, this is just a lot of key plays throughout the basketball game. And you're going to – y'all keep complaining about the refs. Oh, it's going to be turned up another notch in the playoffs. Y'all thought this was something – the, the, the whistles will not be going the fever's way. And I know this already, man. I'm not even really going to get on the rest in the playoffs because I already know how it's going to go. You know what I mean? I already know how it's going to go. We're going to get screwed by the rest of the playoffs. The, 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 expect it to happen. You know, uh, the fever are going to need to probably blow some of these teams out to avoid those situations with the refs and not be down in games because I'm telling you right now, that whistle will not be in our favor at all, man. It will not be. Uh, but quick little uh, thing here before I continue on with the video. I do have a cash app, guys. If y'all been liking my content, y'all been rocking and rolling with me, man. You appreciate the content that's coming to y'all, man. You do like my boy El Professor did. He sent another dono to my cash app last night or the night before. Um, he saw the Lexi Hall and Sophie Cunningham video. Make sure y'all watch that if y'all haven't seen that one yet. Talk about their beauty. He was the hottest between the two. So he gave me a $3 dono for that. So he's given me $30 um, since he started donating in the past couple of weeks. So I appreciate him for that. Uh, right now, he's the leading donator, man. I would like to have somebody challenge him on the donations, man. I would like to see uh, a challenger form on the, on the Cash App here, man. But uh, my name on the Cash App is Dollar Sign Sack Exchange. And. Uh, and you can donate just like him, just a little bit at a time, one or two dollars, three dollars. You know, it ain't, it ain't much. You got to donate. But if you're a big heavy whale, and uh, you don't mind donating a little bit more, I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna do with that money, man. I've been saying it on my last few videos. This girl named Rachel Debita, who covers Caitlin Clark on here as well, she's uh from 2K TV. She was a host on there. If y'all play NBA 2K back in the 2010s, she was the host on there. And uh, now she's doing stuff like sideline reporting. Big three. I think she's doing some stuff in college football this fall. So definitely support her because she's been making a lot of good videos about Caitlin Clark. But she got a mic, right? She got this mic that I really want. And I need a new mic, man. I want that mic, man. So if y'all can help me out with that, uh, y'all can help me out on the Cash App with that one. Dollar Sign Sack Exchange is my name on the Cash App, man. But let's get back to it, y'all. So Caitlin Clark had a pretty nice game, though. She had like 25 points. So, she's been getting really comfortable in the league, like, finding her shots and stuff like that, you know. Uh, she had 25, 8 rebounds, 8 assists. I betted on her last night. She was supposed to have got 9 assists, so she was a little just short of that on her props. But she's been hitting her props over her, over on her props lately, so I've been good on that. 5 out of 10 from 3, 50%, pretty good from her. Here's the thing. With Caitlin Clark, uh, that one, and then y'all, y'all know I don't care about turnovers on this channel, man, because a lot of those turnovers aren't really her fault. Now, the ones that were her fault that I was pissed off about was the ones that she was getting in the fourth. I've been seeing this a lot with Caitlin Clark in the fourth quarter, where she forces passes into the post and stuff. Sometimes, like she po she forces a lot of passes where they shouldn't be going. She did this a lot in this game, and she knows, she knows better. She's got to stop. And, 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 and the way she's going to clean this up is two things, man. She's going to need a big that is really skilled. Like, until we get that big, Caitlin, you really should be force-feeding these passes. We don't have a roster right now up front. Boston is your only good player really up front that could really handle that. You know, right now, um, though, the, you know, and even Boston makes some fumbles um, in, the, in the post sometimes. So, once we get that player, you can kind of force feed like that. But right now, Caitlin, what you need to do, because you be open sometimes, you need to take these shots, bro. And I think, and it, I blame Saz for this, because she got in her, she got in Caitlin's head earlier in the season to pass the ball, right? And Caitlin should be taking these shots. I know Mitchell's on the team, and I don't mind Mitchell getting the ball and shooting it late in the game. But CC be open sometimes, bro. She be open sometimes and she don't take the shot. Like, Bridget Carlton was playing pretty good defense when she was on her in this game. But I noticed something, too. She 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 rolls up. One of the three she got, she rolls up over Bridget Carlton. And Bridget Carlton played the best defense you could play on her. And she still made the three. 
Kaylin has the talent to make shots over people that's in front of her face. Like, as long as you not get double teamed, I feel like you should just take the shot. And also drive. Drive a little more to the lane. Drive a little more. Get some of those. She's been testing that floater out. That floater looks pretty good so far. Use it a little more. Uh, I think one of the things she needs to work on in the offseason is more mid-range. Get some more mid-range shots in there. But Kaylin should be the primary scorer in crunch time. And she needs to take more shots. Because uh, I saw some of those turnovers, man. And it was a result of her passing up shots she should have just took. And like I said, I blame Saz for getting it at CeCe's head to, uh, head to keep passing the ball. I don't mind Caitlin passing the ball in the first three quarters. But when that fourth quarter comes, that's when you need to take over. That's when you need to take over. You know what I mean? You need to take over. Like I said, I'm not saying you should shoot more than 70% in the fourth or 60% of the shots in the fourth. About between 50 and 70% is where you need to be as far as taking shots and scoring the basketball. I don't care if she misses it. She needs to be the one to score. You know what I mean? Because they would have put havoc on this team. And let's talk about Lexi Hall because I'm going to do a big – y'all already know I always do a bigger video about Lexi Hall, but let's, let's talk about Lexi Hall a little bit. Lexi Hall – in this game was incredible. She was doing everything. She was rebounding the ball. That was part of the, the, the thing that I loved about the most from Lexi Hall besides her defense was getting these long rebounds, saving possessions. She's been saving this team's ass since the uh, Olympic break. She's just been saving them. These rebounds, when they, when the shots get cupped, she's uh, she, she'll literally run from the three-point line to go get the ball and run under the rim to go get it. That's hustle, bro. That's hustle and energy. We need another player on a team like that, bro, who provides that hustle and energy. Timmy, Timmy does it too. But I'm talking about somebody from the wing position who could go in there and go chase down rebounds. Because that was awesome, what I saw from her, man. All game, two two steals, one block in this game. She was out there just demoning it up. Uh, offensively, two for two from three. Why are you not giving this girl the ball? I'm still not understanding this. Why Lexi Hall doesn't have more opportunities. Now, some of this is to blame from Lexi herself not being more aggressive and just take because I saw her open a couple of times she passed up on shots. Lexi, you got to take the shots, bro. Take the shots because you should have had like 12 in this game. You had eight, but you could have had 12. You know what I'm saying? Like, she got to go. She got to step up and take the shots a little more because this is why I said her potential it's between 13 and 18 points per game. I think she could start out with a good 10 to 12, but I think she could get up there between 13 and 18 because she reminds me a lot of someone that was cooking us yesterday, Bridget Carlson. She reminds me a lot of Bridget Carlson. Bridget Carlson plays some really decent defense. I think Lexi's a better defender than her, but Lex, but Bridget has that body, though. She, she's a little bigger, um, and, and she could get in front of you and really stop what you're doing. But Bridget Carlson, what she does, she was 4 for 9 from 3 yesterday. She was cooking the hell out of us. You know what I'm saying? She was cooking the hell out of us. I thought she played a much better game than Fifi. Fifi, Nafisa Collier did most of her damage at the line because the referees was really, the whistle was tight on Collier. You, you couldn't breathe on Collier. There was a couple of times where I noticed with Collier also bulldozed in, a, in the hall, uh, in the post, and it didn't even get called. So, they was on a lot of BS with Collier, but I get most of the credit. Courtney Williams, who hit some big shots, Bridget Collison, and Alana Smith. Those are the three I gave more. Because like I said, I think I think, I think think defeats of Collier, I think a lot of her stuff yesterday was force-fed by the refs. Um, this is why I still got Asia Wilson as the MVP over Collier because I noticed like whenever I see uh, – now – I'm not gonna lie, Collier does a good good job at drawing fouls too, though. That's the thing you gotta remember about her too, because she plays such a physical game. She does a good job enforcing those foul calls, and that's the problem with the Fever right now. They don't got a player like that. Boston doesn't really do it too much, as much as she should. We need another player. That's why I said Sasu Sabli or somebody who could um, get that whistle. I wish Bridget Carlson was a free agent this year, because I'll take Bridget Carlson right now, but she's a free agent the year after. And I don't know if she's going to stay in Minnesota, go home to Toronto when that team comes out that year, or 
But we can use her, man, because we can use another body like that, bro. We need another big body for or something. Somebody replacing Alyssa Smith. Because Alyssa Smith got to go, bro. She was awful. And one for seven, like, no, I, I seen enough of Alyssa Smith. She got to go. She got to go. She got to go. She got to go. She's been a drag bust, in my opinion. She got to go. Um, she got to go. I wish Dantes was playing, because we didn't get nothing out of Dantes either yesterday. I wish she was playing better so we, she could have got more minutes. But I like that Timmy stepped up when she came in, especially defensively. She came in and stepped up. Erica Wheeler's been doing better off the bench. I want Matt, like, between the two free agents, Kelsey Mitchell, uh, the big free agents, huh, Erica Wheeler, if Erica Wheeler takes a discount, I want Matt signing her back because I know how important she is to the uh, chemistry of the team uh, in the locker room. She's a locker room leader. So I want Matt keeping her for, like, an extra season or two. But I don't understand why – I still don't understand why Chrissy Sasson plays Grace Berger, why she won't play her. Katie Lusami said they get a big three. Um, I was see this is why I like to see with Katie Lou Samuelson. Instead of taking Lexi Hall's minutes, why not split them up? Like, there's times when she should play small forward to relieve Lexi Hall, and then in like the other half, I would like to see her relieve because there's no reason for Melissa Smith to be playing over 20 minutes right now. No reason at all. What what else she do that's better than Wheeler, Samuelson, and Dantes right now to be getting more than 20 minutes on this team? No reason. There's no reason for Alyssa Smith to be getting that many minutes, man. She is killing us by being on the court sometimes. She'll start out the games really well. Like she, Melissa Smith will look like Aaliyah Boston sometimes starting the game, looking really good. And then she'll just disappear the rest of the game. She didn't even have a good start, though. Like, that was the difference in this game between some of our last few games. She didn't even have a good start. But to have Chrissy Sass, you gotta adjust these minutes. There's no reason for her to be having over 20 minutes, bro. She's not, you know, bro. She doesn't deserve more than 15 right now. Until she earns more than 15, don't give her more than 20. Cause Timmy could have been getting like Timmy played 15 minutes. She should have had more. I would have played more Katie Lou Samuelson so she could get in the rhythm on this team. Because she could play some decent defense too. You know what I'm saying? But. It's hard for Katie Lou right now to get in a rhythm right now. Dantes, too. I, I feel like Dantes isn't getting enough minutes. Like, the minutes right now on this team, and this is why I say this roster is just, we got we to gotta blow this roster up after the season, bro. They probably really should have did it before CC got drafted. The only four players that I'm willing to keep on this team is obviously Clark, Hull, uh, Boston, and uh, probably Timmy right now. The rest of them can go. I want man keeping Katie Lou and Erica Wheeler, but the rest of them gotta go. And if you're not gonna play, if you're not gonna play, uh, play Grace Berger, then let her go somewhere else where she can get playing time. Grace Berger could probably be playing overseas right now. Like, you know, you wasting her time, Chrissy Sass, man. Um, yeah, I, I think it, it, because our team right now is not deep, we need to build this bench. Get Kate Martin, get Megan Gustafson, like I've been saying in my past few videos. Um. Someone had bought up Tina Charles, and I was, like, kind of digging that idea. Because Tina Charles could start. Tina Charles still, still looks really good with Atlanta at her age. I'll bring her over for a season. I'll bring over Tina Charles for a season. But I think Boston probably needs someone like Tina Charles. She can learn some stuff from Tina Charles playing right next to her. I think she'd be really good. And I think she won't mind playing with Caitlin, a chance to win a championship. I think Tina Charles should be someone that should definitely be thinking about Indiana. I'll definitely bring her in, man. I'll bring in Tina Charles for real. We might have to make a video about her in the future bringing her in. Um, I, I'll definitely bring her in. But, yeah, man, I, I said this in my past few videos with Kelsey Mitchell. I saw enough, man. That second half from Kelsey Mitchell was disgusting. It was disgusting, bro. It was disgusting. She got back. We got back to playing a half. See, Christy Sides, bro, Christy Sides, bro, when the – it's like when she feels like the rain is falling on her team, she goes back to the half court. Stop changing it. Just keep playing the fast pace. Because you keep, because what you did, Chrissy says, this is what you're doing, bro. Chrissy, Chrissy, honey, bro. This is what you're doing. You're playing into the feet, you're playing, you're playing to the Lynx hands. For those of y'all that know track and field, there's a lot of y'all that actually, y'all told me y'all like, y'all watch track and field. 
a lot of these girls have played track and field, right? They, I mean, uh, have been running track. You don't run the runner's race. You run your race. That's what happened to Femke Ball and Sydney McLaughlin. The reason why Femke Ball came in third, she played Sydney's uh, race. She ran her race. She didn't run. Femke didn't run her race. What you did, Chrissy says, you played the fever. I mean, the Lynx game. The Lynx wanted the game to slow down. You played their game. We were running fast in that first half. We were running them out the gym. That's why they were down, what, like 10, 12 points at half? Because we were running, I think it was like 10 points. We were running them out the gym, bro. And Christy, what you did, you went back to half court basketball. That's how we lost the first, the last game against the Lynx. You reverted back. And Kelsey Mitchell, this is why I said a, a Tiger's never going to change our stripes. When we go back in the half court, Kelsey Mitchell goes back into playing selfish ball. Kelsey plays more of a team-oriented game when we run fast. I've noticed that about her. She will play more team-oriented when we play fast. She did that in the first half. But then she reverted back to being selfish, chucking up shots, and shooting us out of the game. But like I said, this is, this is why I'm still very steadfast on replacing Mitchell because of stuff like that. I really, be, I, I really believe in my hearts of hearts. We draft someone like a Sonya Centron, uh, Sonya Centron who could play defense, bro. It could pass. Because cause whenever Caitlin came out of the game and Kelsey was supposed to be running the point, it looked terrible. It looked terrible. We need another two guard. We need a younger two guard. Lucy Olsen is another option as well out there. If we can't get Sonya Centron, we, we've, we've got we to gotta fix that, bro. This roster needs to be overhauled. Lynx have a more complete roster right now. We see them in the playoffs, we're losing. We're not, we're not beating the Lynx. We just don't have the roster. We don't match up well against this team, bro. We need a better roster. And, and I'll tell you, we only beat the Lynx that first game because Nafisa Kalia wasn't playing. She wasn't playing. And we got our ass burnt by Bridget Carlison today. She was killing us in that fourth. We don't have the roster construction that they got, man. We need to go look at some of these pieces. I'm seeing that Maddie Seager's not getting a lot of minutes in Dallas. I won't mind getting her at the season after this one. She could be helping this team right now. Uh, there's a lot of players that's not getting minutes all over the league that we can take and build this bench. You know what I'm saying? I will overhaul the shit out of this roster, man. Eight girls got to go. At least eight of them got to go. They should not be coming back next season. Like at least, I say about at least because six to eight girls should not be coming back next season. I'm keeping four. I'm keeping Clark, Lexi Hall, uh, Timmy, Fang Banley, and uh, Leah Boston. I'm keeping those four and everybody else got to go. Get your walking papers, you got to go. You know, I like Katie Lou. If you can keep on the discount because she got a max. Well, it's not going to be easy to trade her anyways. She will have to probably go on the uh, expansion draft. So... But the one that you could definitely trade against a value off of is an Alyssa Smith. There's still some teams that believe they could use an Alyssa Smith. I, I would trade an Alyssa Smith for either some more picks or, uh, or a bench piece. I think we could at least get a bench piece, a valuable bench piece out of an Alyssa Smith that could help us out. Shoot, see a Minnesota want man. See what they want for um, Alana Smith or uh, that, that girl who has, bro. See what they want for her, that big girl who was, bro. I like her. Um, the other one, um, uh, what's her name? Um, the other girl that was killing her, Xander Lassini. Xander Lassini, a uh, man, she got a good stroke from three. But she she could come off the bench and help us, man. It's little players like that around the league. Why, you know, the Indiana needs to really flush this team out, man. This is not a championship team, bro. This is not a championship team at all, man. So overachieving the team. That's what it is right now, man. Caitlin Clark got them way ahead of schedule. But I think at the same time, this is why I like games like this, man. Because it exposes it exposes everything. It exposes what you need. You know what I mean? Um, this team got a lot of work to do this offseason, man. The next couple of offseasons, I would say. Uh, they got a lot of work to do. But uh, number one priority in the offseason, drafting Sonia Centron or Lucy Olsen. That is number one priority that I'm seeing on this team right now. Number one priority. Because Mitchell got to go. It, I, I've seen enough. She got to go. But uh, give me y'all thoughts in the comment section below. We're going to talk about Lexi Hall next. Try to get both of these videos up this afternoon. Um, 
Damn, my college best looking real bad right now. Oh my god. What's going on? But yeah. Hey man. So uh yeah, man. So if y'all want to donate, y'all know Cash App is an option. Dollar Sign Sack Exchange. If you got Bitcoin, you can donate to Bitcoin by Q uh scanning the QR code on the screen right now. If uh Oh, if you want to donate straight through YouTube, uh, through Google, you can do that as well. And any other donation platforms that y'all can think of, let me know in the comment section below. We're probably going to be doing PayPal soon, so be on the lookout for that. Oh, I forgot about my Patreon. I forgot to plug the damn Patreon. Play Patreon as well, y'all. Patreon will be having some individual games up. Uh, when I get a chance to probably start on Monday, I think I'm going to be putting the games back up. Um... Uh, some more games up, so be on the lookout for it. Remember, some of them will be paid for, some of them will be uh some will be paid for, and then some of them will be uh free. So the ones that are paid for, I'm gonna try to have a discount on there for y'all so y'all can sign up for the ones that's uh paid for. And then is there anything else? Oh even if you cannot donate or anything like that or sign up to the Patreon, man. I know right now. Times are hard. Need your money, man. There is something y'all could do for free, though. Hit that like button. Share the video. Subscribe to the channel. I've been loving the love that y'all been giving to me these past few weeks, man. So I appreciate that. Let's get to the Lexi Hall video. Thank y'all for watching this one. Tracking Ace.